Joanna, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you doing? We're doing very, very well. Um, unfortunately, I thought of you when this tragedy occurred on Sunday because the, the, the thing I could relate when I was younger was August 2nd of 1979 when, when Thurman died. Is that what came to your mind when you heard the news? Well, obviously, it was. Um, it impacted me a little differently than most people because it brought back all of those memories that I think I've tried to suppress for a number of years. But it was, uh, it was pretty raw. And, you know, the wounds open up. You just don't realize it, but it brings it all back to you. Is there, I mean, there, there's no handbook for this, Diana. Uh, just a lot of people don't experience it, thank God. What would you tell Vanessa Bryant, uh, what she's going through? What would you tell, how do you get through it? Well, you know, obviously everybody's grief is different. And, and I certainly am not trying to compare tragedies because there is no comparison other than the fact that these were athletes and men in the prime of their life. Um, I would just pray that she has friends, family, her faith um, to sustain her. You know, I was blessed enough to have all of these people around me. And I think that that's what got me through it. And, and basically the fact that she has young children. Young children kind of demand that you be present. And thank God they do because I think they really helped get me through those first couple of days especially. As you mentioned, having people around you, a close family helps. But what's so unique about what you went through is publicly. You're dealing with it with so many strangers who are feeling uh, emotions. Having this all happen publicly, Diana, did it help or hinder the process of mourning? It's interesting that you, you say that because at the time, I didn't really appreciate how much love I was receiving from strangers and from fans. And as the days went on, I realized that Thurman wasn't just loved by his family. He was loved by a nation, and especially New York. I mean, when you're able to see someone who didn't even know him just stand at the stadium and cry these overwhelming tears, you realize the impact that your husband has had on all of these people and that actually helped you and through the 40 years the fans have helped me way more than they will ever realize at some point diana does it sort of change where you know a lot of times people say with um with really tragic death that at first when you think of the person all you can do is cry and then as the years go on sometimes god willing when you think of the people you tend to laugh and have and have smiles as time went on, I'm guessing those run-ins with fans became more and more meaningful because they keep your husband's memory alive. Well, that's exactly what happens. The, the fans, they always thank me for doing different events and for remembering Thurman and, and keeping his legacy alive. But really, I'm thanking them because without their love and support, I couldn't do all of these things. Um I think it's the way you have to look at a tragedy that happens in your life. You're so raw in the beginning and, and no words and no hugs. And really, there's very little that can help you through it other than your faith. But as time goes on, you start realizing that when people share their memories, you see a different side of the person you love. And it helped you tremendously. And I'm hoping that at some time Vanessa will be able to look back and realize how blessed we both were. Um, unbelievable men, and they impacted the entire country. Diana Munson is our guest here uh, on the Michael K Show. I I'm amazed sometimes, Diana, because they show videos at Yankee Stadium uh, of Thurman's career, and they, they do that often during the year. And, and I see people that are 20, 25 you know, standing there and, and staring. Sometimes like, they're crying. And I just, it, it seems like Thurman's spirit has been passed down from generation to generation because those people weren't even alive when Thurman played. Does, does that blow you away when you see that? More than you could ever know. I, I, I cannot believe how much love 
that I feel from the fans and that I see. At one time, I saw three men with number 15 on. There was a grandfather, a father, and the grandson. And they were calling me over, and they were they just wouldn't let it go. And so I, I walked over. I didn't see that they had number 15 on. So when I walked over to them, they turned around to show me 15. And the grandfather said, yes, my grandson knows all about Thurman Munson, who in my eyes was the greatest Yankee of all time. Well, things like that will stay with me forever. And, and they were crying. So I know how much he meant to them. I just don't think he would have ever realized the impact that he's had on so many people. I was just about to ask you that. Did he ever realize how much people loved him? He did not. He, he did realize that New York appreciated him. You know, that was um, obvious. They never, they always let him know, no matter what he did during the game. They let him know that he was their guy. But I don't think even he, <laughs> he would probably be scratching his head going, 40 years later, you all still remember me and love me. And I think that is just the most amazing thing, especially for my family when we come into the stadium. And, you know, the, the kids were little. They were four, seven, and nine. So to see that their dad is still loved and revered at Yankee Stadium means a lot to all of us. No, he died wanting to be with his family. That's why he learned to be a pilot. Did you ever feel any um, problem with baseball, the grind of baseball, that, that the schedule is so demanding that, that that kind of decision had to be made in the first place? You know, no, it is what it is. I mean, you know, I'm not sure what it is now, but it was 162 games and then obviously spring training. Mm. But that's how you become a family. You know, when... Thurman's accident happened. I grieved for the Yankee family that he was leaving behind also. Because if you remember, you saw those men on the field, and all of them were crying, and all of them were heartbroken. And when you have a tragedy like that, you know, just like the Bryant family, you're really never the same. Um, of course you go on, and of course you move forward in your life. But it changes you forever. I was wondering that, and I didn't know if I wanted to go there, but do you ever get over it? Do you ever get over the suddenness? I mean, because I, I would, you know, just as a fan growing up, Diana, it was a nightmare to me. Do you sometimes just think you're going to wake up and, and it, it was just a bad dream? Well, as time goes on, it gets better, but it never fully goes away. <clears throat> you, you know, you just don't have your husband walk out the door and be completely healthy and you know, never come home again, never to see him again. But I always think how lucky I was to have had him. I think when you turn your thinking around and you realize it's what you've had, not what you've lost, then I think you can go on and you're maybe a little stronger for it. Diana, thank you for sharing this. Um, I look forward to seeing you on February 4th, as always, and uh, my best to you and your family. Thank you so much.